Welcome to Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast, where falls count anywhere. There are no disqualifications and a two-hour time limit. Introducing the participants. The opinionated one, Ryan Sangster. The 18-year-old piece of gold, Joseph Parr. The real deal, the anti-miz, Ryan Palmer. And the real franchise, James Richards. Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast, NXT and AEW edition. Today with Ryan Palmer, it's me, and James Richards. Say hello, James. Yo, yo, yo. And don't forget, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at Hardcam Wrestling Podcast and follow me on Twitter at Yardy316. You can listen and view us on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube, uh, hitting the notification bell. And we're currently on other podcast platforms as well. What podcast platforms are we on, James? Spotify and Google. Check my emails. What happened? Right. So give me a minute. I thought we were like <laughs> more than that. We, uh, They're the main ones, aren't they? And Podbeam still. Oh yeah, Is that correct. Podbeam. Yeah, still on Podbeam. We always give Podbeam. Got upload it love. somehow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, soon to be on uh, Apple Pods. Oh, I've got oh, breaking no. news. <laughs> we're oh, now on. Look, look, we're look, now look. on Apple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're on Apple Pods as well. Fucking hell. Tremendous. We've, we've broken the big time. We finally won the big one. Outstanding. Right. <laughs> so, what do you think of this week's uh, shows overall before we like break them down or just shoot the breeze over them? You know what? Yep. I- both shows are really good. And it just, it's made a lot of people in the US, I hope everyone's safe, by the way, very uh, forget about the troubles. I think Night of Wrestling like that was needed for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yes. Two really good shows, I thought. I thought they were good. Uh, overall, not mind blowingly outstanding. Um, really good part matches. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the very two very good matches in NXT. Um, again, one of them's turned out to be a complete bloodbath, or oh, near enough a bloodbath. Um, and the other was just like a carnage, friggin' uh, chaos-filled street fight. Oh, a last man standing match, oh, kind of last woman standing match. Even it reminded me a bit of the uh, Kurt Angle and uh, Shane McMahon mm. street fight. I, I, when they went backstage and when uh, Rhea put Gonzalez through the door, that bit, I, yeah. that's what we we're going to start doing stuff like that, like chucking, <laughs> uh, chucking each other through windows and doors and stuff like that but they just limited it to just being put through a door yeah um, glass breaks. It, well the glass breaks yeah, yeah no, that was uh, it wasn't like that juicy sugar sugar glassy but it was like it looked real enough mm. that they could have easily cut themselves um they could have done themselves an, an injury but, yeah uh, <laughs> but they didn't they didn't you um, know the most upsetting thing about last night's wrestling the match was one I was really looking forward to didn't happen the fight pit match yeah I was really looking forward to that yeah um, it's odd that they do show later on in the, in the show that um, Patch is injured uh, he's in the room with a, a trainer and Regal and he's like lifting his arms up or something and they it's never really disclosed what the injury is, uh, from what I remember. Um, but no, he can't compete. <clears throat> but the match will still happen at one point. At some point, it will happen. 
it's probably not on a live show where they've got to quickly construct a cage around a ring. So maybe it could have been just dropped because of time constraints, maybe. Yeah. Um, I thought possibly because um, uh, what's that? Col- the, the Colossus name? Not, what's his name? Ugh. The Australian bloke. Um, he was... Um, well, uh, no, not no, Bob. No, uh, Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed. He was having a conversation. He was being interviewed by one of the interviewers. I thought, oh shit, it's going to be like a impromptu match. But no, he was just there shooting the breeze with, with this interviewer. We did get uh, one impromptu match. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, got starts off with. Uh, Dexter Loomis, so everyone is probably thinking, how the hell is Dexter Loomis going to freaking host this if he doesn't talk? Um, so he, he just presents the show in silence and then flicks the switch, and the whole place illuminates because um, it was in darkness and it illuminates all the, the people around uh, and the, uh, the place itself. Um, introduces New Year's Evil. Uh, sense of place and the colour the commentators welcome to the show uh, and we get the first match the carrying cross versus Damien Priest match um, both of their fancy entrances uh, Priest with his arrow entrance and the fire lighting up his name um, cross with Scarlet in black and white um, the spooky Ball song and Fall and pray, fall and pray. <clears throat> what did you think of this match? Going, judging by, like, it's a, a strange thing. There's like, it's like, there's a trilogy of big hot fights this whole past few days. You had um, Shingo and Cobb at Wrestle Kingdom, and then there's Cross and Priest, and on AEW. There was uh, Hager and Wardlow. I was like, oh, that's fucking... That's, that's pretty weird. <laughs> Did you notice that pattern at all? Or no, is I'm, it just me? You know, I, love, I love big horse matches, so it's sort of in my own. I've yet to see Cobb and Shingo come and watch day two of Wrestle Kingdom yet because I've been ill the past two week, two days. Uh, you still uh, sheltering or yeah, I'm, isolating? Yeah, I'm waiting for my test results. Oh, man. Good luck. I hope they're negative. So, uh, you haven't seen Jingo and, and Cobb? No, not yet. Uh, get it watched. Get it watched. It's it's close to a five star match. It's not a five star match. I think Joe was saying it was a five star match, and I kind of shut him down a bit. <clears throat> but probably having a look at it again, it's near enough for a. Five star. Um, so uh, I think they can't be compared, really. But it's a an odd. I thought it was like a not odd. It was like a a, a bizarre kind of coincidence that uh, this followed. I suppose it kind of. I think it was well. It was accidental. Well, not accidental. I mean, it was like um, like obviously didn't plan it. It's just like ah, oh, you've got to follow that, and then. Um, at the same time, or in a few hours, Wardlow and Hager are doing the same thing as well. So it's kind of mm. like shit. Kind of spoiled by big horse fights. Well, I think you can probably count as another for horse match in Con's eyes and Ripley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because as yeah. women goes, they're, they're not like people like Candice LeRae or people like that. Nah, they're, they're big, they're, tall, they're, rough yeah, women. Yeah, beefier, as you like to say. Beefy women, very beefy. Yes. So uh, more beefy matches this week. Very, very, very. Lots of meat being slapped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, can tell, you can say it like that. Yeah, I think that that's a a good enough kind of description. I say. Um. So. This did end up being like a big beefy, slappy kind of a mm. brawl. Lots of uh, boots to the face, um, punches, lots of kicks to the guts. 
people being thrown about, uh, cross throwing priest about, priest throwing cross about, um, uh, pretty clean in terms of it. There, there, there was no dodginess that happened, no low blows, no cheating, no real heelish, um, no heelish tactics going on. Mm. Stiff kind of moves. What, what did you think? The shocking thing this match, this match went 15 minutes. Were you expecting it to go longer or shorter? You expecting it to go course, shorter? Of course, it's first match back. You make it look <laughs> dominant. Trying to get back in the top pitch. Yeah, I know Priest is quite established, but so is Tommaso Ciampa. He lost in about five minutes. So, yeah. I thought it was supposed to go short personally, but I thought it made Priest look good. Obviously, the reports that was his last match in NXT. Yeah, he's on his way to SmackDown, apparently. Or he was supposed to be on SmackDown last week. Oh, really? Um, apparently. But um, he may very well end up in the Rumble. Yeah, I think. And then then Ripley, maybe. What will he do on SmackDown? SmackDown's got his own little thing right now. It's doing really well. Who's he going to feud? Baron Baron Corbin. Corbin. (laughs) Baron Corbin and his fucking mid-card. He is. Treat is the better Baron Corbin. Yeah. yeah, It's going to be Baron Corbin. Fucking hell. I like Baron Corbin, to be fair. I think he's got one, two chorus moves in the whole company. The which deep, are deep six and end of days, yeah, yeah, yeah. two of the yeah. coolest moves in the whole company. The Shame it's on Baron Corbin, <laughs> with his two hoodlums, the, the yeah. former forgotten sons. Uh, <laughs> keep forgetting his Adam, he's got them to be honest. Yeah, they uh, they're not forgotten anymore. Clean shaven, they don't have beards anymore. I think they shave their heads and they walk around in hoodies yeah. and long coats. <clears throat> so the ending of this was pretty odd because it's it's like he's um, cross uses a, a hidden blade sort of, but not the way that Will Osprey yeah. uses it. So instead of it being like a back elbow, it's a he uses a, the forearm. <clears throat> he hits um, Priest with the Saito suplex, which is usually his finisher. Um, well, he's got that and the cross jacket as well. Mm. Doesn't use the cross jacket at any point. Um, hits him with a Saito suplex. Priest kind of stumbles up in a daze. Uh, and then Cross just hits him with the with the forearm to the back of the head. So it's like, holy shit, he just fucking used or what looked like the hidden blade. But, well, obviously it wasn't the hidden blade. I don't even know if they've even got a um, a name for it. Though I think they might have called it the Northern Lariat. I'm not too sure. So overall, uh, decent enough match. Good match. <clears throat> you think? Yeah, I thought it was really impressive that Priest got a Raiders edge on him. That was a good. That was a good spot. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> on the top rope. Uh, yeah. Cross was going to go for the Saito suplex from the fucking top rope. Um, Priest manages to squirm out of that and hits the uh, the razor's edge, <coughs> which is very impressive. So, where do you think? Do you, where do you think this takes Cross now? So, the NXT take over Valentine's Day against Balor, I think. Should be called some Valentine's Day massacre, but <laughs> it should be. So uh, no other stumbling blocks in between. There, you think he just goes straight into the title mix? Uh, month build. Don't see why not. It's bloody month. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, a week and um, month in a week. So it's not about five. Wait, one, two, three, five weeks. So. I suppose they can. They could do. I mean, he's got a legitimate claim as well. He had to give up the championship and had to take time off for in- to heal his in rehab his injury. Um, Friggin' Balor didn't. 
Balor got injured, got his jaw broken, and then sat out for like well over a month. I think Balor had the lucky thing that it was War Games. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think there you go. You, you've got pre, uh, not Priest, uh, Cross with his legitimate cra- uh, claim to that championship. Uh, unless uh, Balor's injured seriously mm. again. But Don't we'll come. We'll come at that. Yeah, well, there's, there's been reports that both of them have been taken to hospital, but that, that could may just be. It could be WWE working yeah. again. So uh, we shall see what happens if he does go straight into that title picture and uh, up against Bala. And Priest going up the main rust up to the Raw or SmackDown roster, maybe into uh, making his debut in the Royal Rumble, mm. and then straight to feud with Baron Bloody Corbin. Um, so yeah, end of the match, Cross and Scarlet at the top of the ramp, giving it a big celebration. Um, which then takes us to the next match. The no, oh, actually, you got two um, segments. You got um, uh, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong being interviewed yep. about yeah, they the, announced the Dusty Classic returning. They who did they announce in it? So, I've got a list of people that are currently announced. We've got Legado del Fantasma, Everwise, Bree Zango, Imperium, Maverick and Dane, Stallion and Grey. And error and the error. So it's seven moment. I assume Lorcan and Birch will be in it. I assume. The well, champions are always oh, back, so. Yeah, they're the champs. Uh, I assume they'll be in it. They were featured in the show you know, amongst yeah. the audience at some point with with Dud. Um as well as the uh Griddle Young veterans, they were there as well. So Lorcan and Birch should definitely be in that tournament, you'd think. <clears throat> yeah, so seven teams. I oh, know, no, it is eight. They're not in it. Grizzly Young Veterans are in it. It has, it's not my list, so. Yeah, so, so there is eight teams. So you've got so Stallion Gardner, and Tasma, yep. Everwise, Breezango, Imperium, Maverick and Dane, Stallion and Great, Undisputed Error, and Grizzly Young Veterans. So I assume the winner of the tournament face. Lock on a bird to take over. That sounds about right. I think that's usually what happens. Um, what do you what do you know about Stallion and Grey? No idea. <laughs> Wait. The same, man. No, I I'm Google them. Google well my be. friend. I think that was on two hundred five live a lot. Ah. So, yeah, you get the. Did you, did you hear? What did you make of the Adam Gold and uh, Roderick Strong interview? It was what it was. They said the prophecy would come back. So, yeah, see what happens. Oh, will they win it? Looks. Oh, part of me wants Maverick and Dane to win it. Maverick and Dane, you want them to win it? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Why we Someone new. Well, every year, it's somebody new. But it'd probably be Colin Strong. Could be. Who won it last year? Um, who did win it? Oh, Broserates. <laughs> oh, yeah. How much fish can Bobby Fish fry? Bobby Fish can fry fish. How much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry fish? Bro. Yes. Bro. And now he's in the... The, the, uh, the, the Hardy Bros. Hardy Bros. Fucking hell. That's shocking, that is. Not the worst thing WWE's come up with. Not the entirely worst, but it's terrible enough. Um, so this match, the Santos Escobar and the Grand Metalik match, 
troubled me for some reason. It disappointed it, me, this. Yeah. I was it, expecting flippy t- shit. I was expecting flippy shit as well. Uh, apparently, one of them's dressed as a, uh, a Power Ranger. I don't know yes. which one. It was, <laughs> uh, oh, let's say the rather dressed as a Megazord, which I popped. <laughs> I hated the fucking Power Rangers when I was Oh, I loved it when I was younger. <laughs> it just took, I hated it. It was, it was just, I just couldn't stand it. It's more of a time. <laughs> Power Rangers. I remember the, t- the uh, theme tune. Power Rangers. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Go, go, Power <laughs> Rangers. I think what annoyed me was uh, when they talk, you couldn't see their lips move. It yeah. was like, it's fucking blatantly dubbed. This is shit. Can't stand this crap. I mean, I just watched something else. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I watched, but it did. Well, I was like four or five when I was watching it, so. <laughs> Oh god! I think I was coming up to my teens or something like that. I can't remember, but I know I hated it. I remember hating it loads. Um, so yeah, no amount of real flippy shit in this at all. It was slightly botchy, I guess. Yeah, mostly it was a bit sloppy, wasn't right it? Yeah, um, which was a shame. So, was there any anything in this match? specifically that you, you you wanted to go or that you hated or that you, you really loved or noticed that's, that's nothing overly bad really but nothing overly good say so the best thing in this match was probably Lince Eduardo's attire so I mean, there was a point where um, Grand Metalik he was trying to Metalik and uh, Escobar were on uh, the apron and all the top ropes, something like that. And Metalik hit was was gonna hit uh, a Hurricane Runner, um, but it kind of botched on the apron, but he slightly recovered. Um, so Escobar carried Metalik to the barricade thing and just slammed him against that to try and mm. style it out. <clears throat> So they recovered that. Um, there was a lot of it was a pretty good uh, slingshot sent on, which got a two for uh, Escobar, uh, Metalik even. Um, and I mean the, the the other bit that really uh, annoyed us was when Metalik got his mask slightly skewed, so he was on the top rope, and I think. Uh, Escobar was like punching him uh, he might have went for his mask but I'm sure it was just like hitting him in his head a few times and then his mask kind of slipped and then Metalik was just like Ugh, it kind of threw him I was like mm. what the fuck's going on so after that <coughs> Metalik just looked like he was, he was thrown and the match seemed to fall apart did you get that impression or was it just me I just I, it was the weirdest thing. Yeah, uh, it was Yeah. I know, I was really looking forward to this match when I first announced it last week. I, so was I. I was like, fuck, this is going to be really good. This is going to be a real banger. But it didn't... Uh, it wasn't entirely terrible. It just... It didn't, didn't live click. up to expectation. No, it didn't click. <clears throat> For two Lucha guys, it really should have clicked. And then the it, the ending seemed a bit sudden. It just seemed like they they went straight to the end. Yeah. All because of uh, Metalik's mask coming a bit undone. It was just like, that was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. Again, I, it could have just been me, <laughs> just the way I was watching it. Did you, did you get that impression at all at any point? That they, they went straight and they finished a bit quick? No, not really. I didn't really care enough with notice, to be fair. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's just me. It was just weird. Cause it looked like... Cause I, was, I was trying to figure out if Metalik was injured as well, but it was like, no, he's... I rewatched it again, and I was like, no, there's, there's no injury. He hasn't hit his head anywhere. Um, the botches may have threw, threw him off. His headgear slipping a bit, possibly. But, yeah. nah, that wasn't it. I think it was just a, a case of it not really clicking it was a bit clunky and, it, and that may have just been the, the actual finish 
to the match. So, it's slightly disappointing, but decent enough. <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't overly bad, it just wasn't overly good. Yeah. Um, so what about the, the, the two goons with Escobar? Are they in the... Did, did you say they were in the... Uh, yeah, they're, well? in, they're in the yeah. classic as well. They should... I mean, hopefully they'll go far in the classic. They've, they've, um, Mendoza and Wild have, have been by Escobar's side for uh, quite a while, just as thugs, and they don't get a chance to show their skills. And it's known that they are skillful yeah. in the ring, especially Joaquin Wild. Uh Whatever his name was back in Impact, I can't even remember. Um, so hopefully, in the Gusty Classic, they get to show their stuff. <clears throat> uh, Ray Ripley's backstage doing push ups on her knuckles, showing how hard she is. Um, then we get the Zayali and Boa. Oh, we get a Mercedes Martinez vignette. Oh. Ooh. Says she doesn't want to win the title Superstar of the Year or NXT's top badass. She didn't want to see NXT Women's title. She was fucking badass in that promo as well. Yeah. Shit. What was her name in, in Retribution again? I can't remember. I'm not sure. I'll look this up. <laughs> She's a fucking lucky thing she got the hell out of that shit. Because, uh,. Unless they're gonna fucking bury her for it in NXT, it's like, yeah, you can have a title job, but you're gonna, you're not gonna retaliation. Retaliation. Christ. Not as bad. <clears throat> as no, nah, that was just fucking horrendous. <clears throat> I'm so glad that she got out of that friggin' that clown stable as soon as she did. But yeah, she sounded pretty badass. Um, hopefully, she does go to war, and they have a war with. Uh, her and Io Shirai. Um, I wouldn't be too unhappy if the title did go to uh, if it did go to I've forgotten her name already. Fucking Mercedes. Hell. Mercedes. Uh, what that, do you What do you think? That title is getting brewed up before Cal Gonzalez. You see? Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Raquel Gonzalez. Versus uh, Yo Shirai for the type championship. Yeah. So after weeks and weeks and weeks of and yes, weeks and weeks and weeks, <laughs> and weeks of torture videos, um, people getting tenderized with m- tenderizing mallets and uh, punches and kendo sticks, um, and lots of blood. We finally get well. We get one half of. Or one third of this puzzle um, as we get Zaya Lee's re emergence. We yet to get um, Boa's re emergence, and we get we, we are yet to find out who the mystery woman is. Um, and I've not seen any rumors. Do you have you seen any rumors? Do you, do you have an inkling as to who the mystery woman is? I do not have any intel, I'm afraid. No intel. No, I'm just, I'm, been that focused the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any uh, any thoughts on this match? Yes, <clears throat> it's cool. It was, wasn't it? Yes, that was something special. What about um, Zaya's new look? Again, cool. She, she put on fucking muscle as well. Yeah. She's chunky as fuck. She's got abs for days. Didn't look so cool. <laughs> she did she got kicked in the head. So that was it. Fucking time. She got two kicks. One fucking kick. Just She ate that kick. She was like, yeah, I'll make you look good. Zaya, don't worry. I'll duck into this. Clap. Kicked in the head. Zaya did a, a duck to the, the mystery woman. Um, <laughs> and then she got like, Katrina Cortez, I think her name was. Katrina Cortez ate so many boots in this batch. She could open a shoe shop. She got... The, the second one was really fucking nasty. It was mm. like... 
took it full on in the face and, and was out for the three. I so, hope she kicked her so hard that uh, uh, she got me, needed to get a new attire because that was bloody awful. That was. If this was the OSW review, we would doing a we would be doing a what bar uh, off, um, on air, but this what? isn't. Um, we, we do not steal gimmicks. What? So, what? 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 Uh, so yeah, she she took a boot. She got pinned. She was in pink and she had a mask on. Zaylee was uh, all brand new, new tats as well. I think. Um, for a squash match, it was it was what it was. It was a squash match. A squiddly squash match. It was indeed. Which then uh, Go backstage to William Regal. He says, Timothy Thatcher cannot compete tonight. Yeah, so they'll f- can't face Smart and Fight Pit, but they will do so once Thatcher is healed. Yes, once Thatcher's healed, the fight. And pit I will cannot be bloody on. wait. Yeah, that, that last I fight love, pit match. I love just... the first fight pit match. It was brutal. Riddle and Thatcher. Yeah. It was absolutely fucking brutal. I hope, I hope they're not WWE not going to do this, but imagine if we have Lashley and Riddle. Oh. Sounds tasty. That's but indeed. Like That's indeed. Lashley versus Riddle. Yeah, they're, they're just not going to book it now. <clears throat> uh, we have the last woman's last woman standing match. This was bloody good. <clears throat> This was insane. It starts off insane because Ripley just drop kicks. Raquel Gonzalez out the fucking ring. <clears throat> it doesn't start with a lockup, which is which what I was pleased about. Like two people in a war uh, in some sort of blood feud. In a so last man standing match, do not start so, with a lockup. It's so annoying when you do it as a blood feud and it's like a street fight. Last man standing, hell in a cell. Starts off in a lockup. Yeah, but just like, oh, fuck off. Fuck right off. Did not start with a fucking lockup. This didn't uh, immediately uh, drop kick. Uh, Raquel and Ripley are just fighting all over the arena. Um, it's like the fucking um, Peter Griffin and the chicken fight. This is what this was. Um, from Family Guy, if you don't know that reference. <laughs> <laughs> you should know that reference. Why don't you know that reference? Yeah, I'd be quite ashamed of myself I didn't know that reference. <laughs> so, um, at one point, Ripley handcuffs Raquel to the um, plexiglass thing. <laughs> She's beating on her and wailing on her. And... She's that strong. She fucking rips herself away from that. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, it's it was really me. cool. Um, Ripley gets put through the announce table as well. The fucking hardest part of the announce table. And it's, she gets put through in the weirdest, most awkward way as well. It's not like whenever someone gets powerbombed through the table, it's through the middle of it through the actual desk part mm. but Ripley goes through with her back right on the angle um, she kind of bounces upwards as well and then comes back down it's just like fuck that looked rough that looked so rough uh, anything you want to weigh in on this that you noticed at all or really loved or really hated I love Dakota Kai's cameo. Yes, that was funny. <laughs> that was tremendous. <laughs> Ripley, they go backstage. Fucking uh, Ripley puts Gonzalez on a table, some sort of freaking merch table or something. There's snacks on the table or something. Uh, it's Fashion like a stand. It's Fashion. but it. it yeah, it's it's in a, like there's old lockers, there's a flight case next to the lockers, and then there's this table, and then there's other lockers. It's like okay, this is the weirdest place. Convenient, um, I think not. 
<laughs> that flight case looks convenient. Mm. Chekhov's flight case. So uh, then Ripley goes and climbs up on, uh, like on the table or some high structure, comes down on a fucking McAlpin's eyes, puts her through the table, um, and uh, gets a, like an, an eight count. <laughs> the co- a guy runs in with a fucking kendo stick and starts hitting uh, Rhea Ripley several times. <clears throat> that is not even the end of her um, of her cameo. What else happens with her cameo? Well, Rhea Ripley fights her back, knocks down Gonzalez again, and beats up Kurt Kai, and puts the Kurt, starts hitting him with a locker door, and puts her in the locker. That's tremendous. And um, just curl it up, and that was last to see the Kurt Kai. She she blocks the locker with the flight case as well, so there's no way she can come. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Uh, so yeah, she, that's her done for the rest of the evening. Luckily, there's air holes in the locker, so she's she's not going to die or, or mm. of of asphyxiation. <clears throat> yeah, so, they go, they go to the stage. Yeah, they there come back. Are. Come back to the stage. Uh, there's a chair and, some, and the ring steps are out on the stage as well. Um, Rhea puts on the like that, that cloverleaf type move yeah. onto Gonzalez um, um, and uses the chair for, for some sort of extra leverage. <laughs> uh, Raquel Gonzalez fights off, pushes. Rhea Ripley into the uh, light board, the LED board. Um, there's another fight, um, another counter where Rhea throws Gonzalez into the other, into the LED board, and the, the LEDs go all, uh, all gimmicky, like they've been damaged. Um, end comes where Ripley gets Death Valley driver through the fucking stage. Um, That's so cool. <laughs> so Death Valley driver through the stage. Raquel Gonzalez makes it out for like eight or nine. Ripley doesn't. Ripley's in the deep dark depths of hell uh, for the ten, and she is done. <sighs> so uh, that's that's Ripley. Ripley called up to Raw or SmackDown via the Royal Rumble, do you think? Yeah, I think Ripley would debut in the Rumble. Um, Maybe to eliminate Charlotte. Ooh. Let's hope so. Yeah, rekindle that feud. Ripley needs to get her win back. Mm. We're interested to see what... We usually find, have a little idea what's going into WrestleMania at the moment. I mean, at the moment, you have no idea. Yeah. Which I love. So you should start putting stuff in the Real for me, Roman Goldberg. Could still be. I don't know. Both titles on the line. I know. God. No. Well, I mean, uh, is is Goldberg comparable to Sting coming back? No. (laughs) It's not comparable. (laughs) (laughs) Helping out Darby Allen. I hope it goes, oh, I'm in there with a door mat. I'll headbutt this bloody locker. I'll headbutt this locker so I can get sucked up for this promo. You fucking idiot. Oh, I've got some. Like, that promo sound like it's for Randy Orton as well. His promo is directed to Randy, um, but he's looking at Drew. <laughs> oh, God. Unless, uh, as rumour had it, it was probably that um, they run out of time. Oh, out of time. Drew was supposed to cut a promo, maybe turn in heel on the legends, uh, cut a disrespectful promo, which would kind make of make sense. sense. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it's like, why are you turning heel? But it would make sense as to why uh, Goldberg is saying what he was saying. I've You've got heard, no respect. I've heard Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy was supposed to be the main event. Really? 
Yeah, and Drew and Keeper open the show. That's weird. That show got completely jiggled about. And that happened like that got reorganised like two hours before the show. Must have done. And they clearly run out of time in the end as well. Uh, so uh, back to good old NXT land. Um, we get Johnny Gargano, Candy Slurry, uh, and uh, the way basically. <laughs> you know what? You know what made me laugh? What? Um, they do the they did the picture and picture while they're on their way to the building. <laughs> they just do this whole. It had one picture of the adverts, and on the other picture, the way was just still driving along the road. Got to watch on stream. Don't do that, children. Buy TV. But it just made me laugh so much. Picture and they- picture just for them driving. <laughs> With a police escort, yeah, or whatever it was. went back to we Ripley for a minute or two, then back to the way again. That was a very bizarre picture in picture spot, but a good use of picture in picture, yeah. I suppose. <coughs> but the way I was quite quickly become one of my favorite things. This was a very funny promo as well. I support indie wrestling, <laughs> indie hardwell, I indie wrestling. Brilliant. That was one of my favourite segments of the whole year a couple of weeks ago, the guy going to Christmas. It was very, very funny. <laughs> the very way funny. the can goes, we support indie wrestling. Yeah. So we've broken the curse. Uh, the curse of a goat. But he starts referring to the curse of the goat, the curse of the bambino. Yeah. Which I think the baseball references slags off some bloke in the, the audience saying he's his curse. Uh, he's still got a curse because he can't get a girlfriend or some shit. Um, you go, yeah, you get there. You see the guy in the background going, yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah. Putting, putting thumbs up and shit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this segment may have replaced the fight pit. But I was totally fine with Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was kind of fine with I was like, yeah, it, it's kind of... It, it seemed a bit contrived, and especially seeing as Dexter Loomis suddenly has like a um, a picture, a caricature drawn, or already of the the mix uh, mixed tag team match. So it's just like, yeah, oh, right, okay, this is this is the replacement for it. <clears throat> it wasn't Before that. Shots he interferes. Well, they got a whole picture as well, a new picture, which is like the Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gargan gets a plaque as well. Yes, he does. For breaking the curse. And Shotzi interferes, thinking, oh, have you forgot about me, Candice? Osprey goes up and interferes, then gets shot in the dick by the tank. The best use of that tank yet. Austin Ritz, Austin fair Theory. play to Austin Theory. Sold it the whole match. <laughs> <laughs> Must have come up with some force that. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. a mixed tag match of Kashida and Shotzi versus Candice and uh, Johnny Gargano. It was fine. It was. It was all right. Um, if, <clears throat> uh, again, if a bit like, well done. Why? <laughs> has Kashida had beef with? Gargano lately, I can't even yeah. fucking remember. Um, he has. Gargano, uh, she had teamed with Leon Ruff against Gargano and Fury a couple of weeks ago. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort yeah. of lo- looking like she's the next challenger for Gargano, which I am all for. That should be very, very. Because and Joy Gargano that sounds like a lovely match to have on the takeover. It should indeed, yes. Um. A decent challenger. Um, yeah, yeah, that should that should be fucking good. That um, Vic Joseph and Bad News Barrett are, are on commentary with Dexter Loomis. <laughs> obviously, Dexter, funny. <laughs> he doesn't say anything, and uh, Barrett's a sketchy. Yeah, that's funny. That was pretty funny. 
Barrett and Rick Joseph are such a good commentary team. They complement each other so well. There is good comment. There is good uh, chemistry between the two. Yeah. Yeah. There is it's very good. Um, so, okay, Mash. Um, that was all right. For what it was. Uh, standard flippy kind of submission y kind oh, of stuff. Shotzi needs broken neck. Yeah, she did. Fuck. This is why I call her shitty black heart sometimes. Because <clears throat> she's. Here's my favourite word, sloppy. Um, that dive out of the ring, she nearly fucking... It was like the um, Lita dive. Yeah. Lita versus Trish, but this was fucking near enough worse. I know one um, worse shot, she saved herself. Yeah. While Lita it, actually landed on her face and bent over. It looked nasty. It looked... Shot, she, shot she was able to save it. Yeah. Seen, so she is kind of she's dangerous. She needs to watch mm. it. But I think she was doing stuff like that in in um, uh, Evolve and other places. Yeah. So it's not entirely out of character for her to do the diving out of rings into chairs and stuff. Um, near enough landing on your head and stuff. So it's not too out of character. Just really, really fucking concerning. So then we get the uh, uh, we get the Bala and uh, I had a I had a massive announcement before the main event. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, what is this? Rhea Vigil is an interview about stage. He announces that next week the Dusk Classic begins. However. Look for strength and depth of the roster means he can announce the first ever women's Dusty Tag Team Classic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what um, I thought. Cool. Gonna, but how many teams do they have? Unless they're inviting teams from uh, the other That'd rosters. Cool. But fucking. Surely you get a women's tag team tie match if you win. You'd hope. You'd like a fucking thing. Make use of the freaking tag teams. Um. In all three of the uh, <coughs> brands. <coughs> Pity that fucking impact are doing their women's tag team tournament at the moment yeah. as well. Though. It's like, uh, have you been copying someone's homework, Regal? What the hell? So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I think who would be in it. Also, you have Candice and Indy. Oh, wait, also, Gargano and Siri have announced for the tag class, tag, plus Dusty Tag Team Classic. Yes, they are. So uh, that'll be the classic. So, Dusty classic looking pretty stacked. So you might have Raquel and Raquel and Dakota Kai, Casey Catanzaro and Caden Harter, Liam Vanessa Bourne. Ooh. Maybe get with the town Duke and Shafir. Ooh. Uh, obviously, Kansas and Indy Hartwell will be in it. Mm. Which could be my little prediction for a winner at the moment. Ember Moon and someone? Yeah. Who she would... Um, oh, who, would she, who would she go with? Um, well, it's time to get the roster up. <laughs> it is a stacked freaking roster, but... Um, yeah. Who the fuck would she go with? <clears throat> okay, so. so unless they dragged a load of people from, um, from SmackDown, like uh, Lacey Evans, and I wouldn't uh, mind if they did that. Okay, so so there's a lot of them not doing a lot. On Raw or SmackDown at the moment. Oh, what's that? So, it would, so it would... hmm. it's gonna have Indian Candice. Yeah. Uh, maybe Vanessa Born and Leah. Casey Kanzara and Kane Carter. Maybe uh, Shafir and Duke will return. Um, could be 
Ember and Io Shirai, I guess. Decent yeah. shout. We could do that. Or Ember and Shotzi. Actually, yeah, Ember and Shotzi. Ah, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. That actually makes more sense. But you know what? Candice and Indy versus Oscar and Charlotte wouldn't be against. That would be awesome. Will it be a Charlotte a tower above it? Uh, maybe this would be a way to get Charlotte, the old thing, cross over with Charlotte, put someone over in NXT. <laughs> Triple H is a genius. <laughs> yeah. a genius. Yes, do it again. See if it works this time around. But it'll probably end the moon, so no one gets over. <laughs> no, maybe the women's tag team title will be on the line at uh, TakeOver. Let's but, see what happens, Ma. And Maybe it'll be the build-up to Oscar and Charlotte at Mania. I yeah. guess. Why would they retread that? If they, if they go that route again, if they... if it is Oscar and Charlotte. At least put fucking Oscar over this time instead of Charlotte going over. That was a fucking disgrace. <laughs> we both know that won't happen. <laughs> it's friggin' annoying. Be serious. They've got to fucking put Oscar over this time. <laughs> Dear I do that. If they had any sense, they would. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you've got a point. You have a point. Um, so, were there any more, or were there any other uh, announcements, or was that the last one? Then we see the brand yes. minus Pat Maxi in the front row for the main event. Oh, shit, I didn't even. Ah, oh, right, right, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Birch and Lorcan and Pete Dunn. Yes, yeah. minus Pat McAfee. He's probably been, he said he reckons he's been sacked, fired. <laughs> No, they don't know what to do with them, really. It's just fucking mad. So, uh, Bala and O'Reilly. This. Stiff as fuck. Absolutely fucking stiff as fuck. Um, I don't think it was as stiff as the first one, um, but nonetheless, it was still as stiff as it could be. Um, they were hitting each other with shots and tying each other in fucking knots and doing joint locks and breaking bones. Um, do, do you see the, the spot where uh, to get out of the, the move that Kyle O'Reilly was in, Kyle O'Reilly had to reach to the ropes with his teeth? Yeah, then Baz kicks the ropes. Oh, fucking hell. Not fucked up his teeth. Where's that? Hap- We've seen that recently. Oh, that's happened recently. Somebody um, having to go with it. I'm not sure. Was it, was it Owens or maybe? I'm sh- unless I've dreamt it. It's so weird. I'm sure we see that's happened recently on a show, but I can't remember which show it was. <clears throat> so bizarre. But yeah, he reaches the ropes, puts his teeth, bites the ropes. Bella kicks the ropes. And uh, I think from that point onwards, Kyle O'Reilly's mouth is completely fucked after that. He's in some considerable amount of pain following that spot. Mm. Sort of been sort of the thing for this match. Kyle gets his jaw injured. <laughs> and I think there's a, a spot later on close to the end of the match where he gets kicked in the, the kidneys again. He gets kicked yeah. in the side and he's just like, oh, no, no. So it's like he's shooting pain. So it's mm. like, what? That's the second time? What's going on down there? Um, why, why? Why does it always fucking double over in pain? I mean, I've never been kicked in that spot before, so I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you probably ask some, like, MMA people, I probably say, it bloody hurts. Probably. probably is it, or is it something to do with him being... Diabetic or something? I don't know. <clears throat> fucking hell. He, got, he gets kicked there and it fucking kills him. Um, what, was there any anything significant or that you noticed in the match that hasn't been mentioned so far? 
Uh, no, it's Steph, Steph, Steph. Really? Vehicle, uh, like, Brain Busters, 1916s. Thing gets busted open before the end of the match. Yeah, it does. It's like, I don't even remember how that happened. He's just no. there with blood streaming down his face. Um, I'm thinking maybe the, the ref's going to stop this at some point, but no. <clears throat> the ref just fair play to I him. Mean, he doesn't stop it to clean up the blood. Kyle's face is absolutely killing him uh, throughout the match. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, and then Finn puts him in like a cross face. Yeah. Um, he's trying. Uh, he's trying to uh, get to the ropes. Kyle is just fucking. He's, he's trying. He's trying his best. He's trying his fucking best. But Finn wrenches back on his head, and he just taps. Oh right, yep. he just taps, and that's the end of the fucking match. <clears throat> Both of them spent. Kyle Riley immediately goes for his face. It's just like ah, oh, fucking faces. So again, these two have been in the war. Do you think it was wise to put these guys in a match, knowing that they're just gonna fucking kill each other? It's oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. Ah, oh, there's pretty good matches, but they always beat the crap out of each other, don't they? Exactly. That's the thing. They're really entertaining, but they're not going to go easy on each other. No. <laughs> they are going to fucking try and break each other's bones. Um, do you think O'Reilly should have went over? No, it keep, right, it right. keep it on thin. I thought. Boy, the best win today. So, uh, the rest of the Undisputed Era come across. We see the Kyle. Um, and Finn goes over, looking like he's going to give respects or something, but doesn't really, and the fucking show just ends. <clears throat> yeah, the show ends. I thought it was a good show. Those two matches were like the best: uh, Rhea Ripley and um, Gonzalez, and the uh, Finn and O'Reilly matches. The best ones of that of that episode to me. Um, mm. Overall, I mean, it it didn't have a. It's not. I don't. It wasn't supposed to be a pay per view. It was just like a special. So it didn't yeah. really have a pay per view feel to it. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Was it something that was it a show that had to be a thing? Did it have to be NXT something or other? Could it have just be NXT on its own? Did it have to be NXT um, New Year's Evil? Because it just been an yeah, NXT. It but you've got to do something like that. If AEW got that, stuff like that, you need to do it because you need to get the viewers in. If people just look at it, oh, it's just a normal NXT, I'll go watch Dynamite. So it's got this new New Year's Bash or whatever it's called. Indeed. Yeah, New Year's Smash. Speaking of which... Segway. Right, segway. We uh, kick off with the Bucks. Um... If you hadn't guessed, this is the uh, AEW portion of the podcast now. And it seems to took longer than I thought it would be. Yes, indeed it did. <clears throat> so we got the um, Bucks and SCU uh, versus... Um, excuse me for a second. The Acclaimed <clears throat> and TH2. Was it? Yes. And the Acclaimed come out of a freestyle... Compare themselves to John Cena and Young Max Marty Gennetti. <laughs> yeah. Jericho said, I'm not sure you can say the names on this. Very, very curious uh, freestyle rap. John Cena to AEW confirmed. <laughs> like, yeah, Marty Gennetti's a bit of a, a case at the moment. Oh, I don't yeah. think you need to be saying those words. They're, they're uh, supposed to be edgy, though, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Match Drive Raw is another fucking PWG style fest 
of flips and high flying stunts and set pieces and uh, near Meltzer drivers. Yeah. So instead of a, a Meltzer driver, you get the, the best Meltzer ever. So a combination of the best moonsault ever and Meltzer driver. I didn't hit cleanly enough, but I still popped for it. Yeah. <clears throat> This is like, man. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> um, anything that you want to add or mention about the match? Yeah, it's just flippy show. I mean, if you got guys like Angelico, Jack Evans, and the Bucks in the match, it's gonna be flippy. A lot about could do the uh, Meltzer driver, but Nick, I can't. Remember. I don't know the name still. Bloody hell. Does it stops and goes, takes a, uh, the acclaimed out outside? Yeah, that was weird, but I was just like, why did you do that? Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> but yeah, that allowed Daniels to do the best moonsault. Well, yeah. uh, moonsault ever into the best melter ever. <clears throat> um, yeah, after the match. Because then he gets on the mic and reiterates that next time him and Daniels lose a match, they're done as a tag team forever. And Kaz says it's not happening on his watch. And if they're going, this is their last hurrah, they want to show out the titles. Good stuff. So, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think uh, do you think they're going to fuck up and split, or yeah, probably. going off going off what happens at the end of the show as well? Like where does it leave? The uh, Daniels and Kazarian kind of situation. The Daniels, Kazarian, and Bucks situation. I reckon the Bucks will be the last team they face. But yeah, do you think they're going to lose that and then they're going to go their yeah. separate ways? Yeah, because they're probably can't rest enough and Daniels might do a little producer type thing. Or do you what? think it'll be a. It'll lead into a Kazarian versus Daniels kind of situation. Could do. They could do that as well. You fucked up. You 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 cost me a tag team titles and yeah maybe. One you turns held me on back. Blah 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 blah. blah. <clears throat> then we have yeah. the turn of Dan Moxley. Moxley. Yes, in the fire promo, yeah. uh, basically saying that when he says he's going to do something, he does something. He he doesn't break his promises or anything. So, like, if you remember on the, the past feuds he's had with um, like the Murder Hawk, he said he was going to tear his. I think it was him. He said he was going to. He, he couldn't. He couldn't get it. Be, he said he couldn't get him up to do the paradigm shift so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear your tricep bone from your uh, tricep muscle from your tricep bone Mm. Uh, and he did just that so in his his promo and then he said he's going to choke out um, Eddie Kingston and he did just that so it's like yeah (laughs) when he says he's going to do something he fucking does it Um, so he's going to do something very bad and very Fucking ungodly to uh, Kenny Omega. So whatever that's going to be, it's going to be fucking he said, brutal. He said he's going to do it. He wants to smack him with a, with a crowbar, but out of respect, he's got Ray Phoenix. He's going to let him do their title match. So, wow. so whatever it is that Moxie has in store will be uh, brutal. Yeah. Then we go to backstage. They interview with Chuck and Orange. They send Trent be out for four to five months. Fucking hell. Torn bicep or something, is it? Or yeah. is it Peck? Peck. Is it Peck? Yes, yeah, it's Peck. Four to five months. Nero, Kip Sabian, and Penelope Pen- Four come in. They say, start talking trash. Chuck challenges to match. Um, Mira goes, oh, if you, you could be my young boy if I went to after the wedding. I thought uh, Miro was wearing a suit that had like weed plants on it, but it's not weed. 
it's just it's yeah. just green with plants or uh, palm trees on it. Yeah, he, he's doing the old uh, 420 gimmick now, is he? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it's not. So yeah, he's going to be his young boy if he loses against the Miro. Yeah. What happened to their wedding? I thought he was uh, supposed to be it, planning the wedding. Uh, there's ha- it's, the wedding's happening somewhere in February. It's happening some point in February? Yeah, I can't remember where it's like Battle of the Beach type show, I think. Uh, wasn't he supposed to be like organising his uh, stag night and stuff though, as well? What happened Not to that? I don't know. <laughs> Fucking hell. The storylines just drop out of nowhere. Um... Big Hoss Battle number three. Oh, this was good. Hager versus Wardlow. So As everyone should know, like now, I like a big Hoss match. <laughs> you like the big Hoss. Big, big. Two beefy guys bashing into each other. I love it. Slapping meat. Yes. Which is what? Wait, what, what was that? <laughs> Calm down, buddy. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, the rest of the inner circle are out there. Uh, obviously, minus Chris Jericho because Chris Jericho's on commentary at the moment. Well, for the whole show, um, and he, he's pretty funny on commentary, even though I don't yeah. like him anymore. Um, not Jericho. <laughs> no, not anymore. Not that I know his political views. Uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sway away from that. Um, it's all done getting politics at the moment. Touchy subject it is. Is it ever? Fucking hell. Yes. Uh, so yeah, these two are just uh, weighing into each other and beating the living crap out of each other. Uh, what did you make of this match? I loved it. It was better than I thought it would be. Bit of oh. Power moves. Hard shots. Break. He goes into a triangle. Ward like road break. It ends with the F10, which I think is a great move. The F10 is a very good move, isn't it? With Wardlow winning. Reminds yeah. us of the tour of the island a bit as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. really good. This. I didn't expect Wardlow to win. Um. No, I didn't. I thought, just, there you go. I thought it might be like double count out or something. Good win for Wardlow. Good win. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really odd that he did win. What do you think it puts them both now? Um, I reckon of... there'll be a tag team. Oh, really? Yeah. Excellent. Big, big tag team. Are they going to be the, the, the odd couple tag team that don't get along? Yeah, and they'll win the tag titles. Oh, no. But what about MJF? He's supposed to be like... Edward Wardlow's supposed to be like MJF's bodyguard. Uh, yeah, I think he'll still do it, but there's something else in the background. So, as a whole, in terms of um, the... In a circle, do you think that it just now kind of puts their beef to rest? No. Ish. Still going to be there. They'll still stare at each other. Why is that guy always staring at me? Me? You're always staring at me. <laughs> that was me. I love that. So, uh, whatever plan uh, MJF has probably still um, involves Wardlow. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not entirely over. No, it's not. Backstage, we have uh, Snoop with Private Party and Matt Hardy. Um, okay, that gin and juice. Gin and juice. <laughs> gin. <laughs> Rubbish. I can hate gin. Gin's horrible. Gin's a, like a 60-year-old woman's drink. Oh, <laughs> take goes like demographic for us. Yeah, well done. Do you drink gin? No, I don't. I hate gin. It's just horrible. Um, so 
Yeah, and then uh, Snoop brings the juice. Uh, Hardy brings the the contracts where you'll take 30% of their fucking earning. <laughs> Shit. They, this they, is big money, Matt. This is. <laughs> it's, so, it's so big money, Matt. Uh, they've got clauses that they want to check uh, is in the contract, which somehow is in the contract, but you know you're going to fucking swindle them out of money somehow. <clears throat> what do you think is going to happen here? Which is, if, if not already stated the obvious. Say that question again. So, what do you think is going to happen here? With these ah. two, three, even. Dan, I'm not going to lie. Um, I think Matt Boy Tan at one point. Probably, yeah, he's going to fleece him. They're going to be stuck with no money. I, I do like that they're using all of Matt's characters. Like one week we're going to get iconic big money Matt the other week we'll get V1 the other week we get broken not going to lie I quite like it the broken one didn't really work uh, that well in AEW unfortunately but yeah they are they've done they've done alright with his, his his characters so far yeah but I, like, I do like this new version of Matt big money Matt so we're into the, the weigh-in. This whole segment pissed me off. Well, the end of the segment did anyway. <clears throat> so, yeah, Team Taz, all of Team Taz. So that's like Taz, Hook, Cage, Hobbs, um, and Ricky Sparks. That's five guys. Five huge fucking blokes. Well, oh, and yeah. then comes out and they run away. Yes! Why the fuck do they do that? Well, first of all, it goes dark after the weighing shenanigans. Um, so there's five guys in a ring with just Darby Allen. So why don't they beat the crap out of him there? Um, then Sting comes and they bail. So it's like, no, oh, there's five of you. Why don't you stay in the ring and beat up this guy? He's 60 years old. But no, they bail. They might not want that lawsuit. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have fucking unretired. <laughs> don't but, think, I don't think they've actually never said he's wrestling so uh, fair news well there's, there's that what, that thing and then the second thing is this sting surprise thing again this light off and oh it's sting here's the snow oh, it's like sting that. they're overusing this I don't, I don't think they are I sort of giving the impression that sting has Darby's back but they're not saying Sting has Darby's back. Mm. I don't personally mind it. Sting hasn't said much. He hasn't been overexposed. He's sort of he's hanging around there, with Darby, saying, "You're a good guy." But I'm not going to you tell you. You are right. Good. Yeah, you're all right. You I'm are right. Tell, I'm not going to tell you, all right? But you're all right. But it, they they shouldn't be bailing out the ring like they did. It just. I know it's a chicken shit heel move, but there's like five of them. <laughs> it's five of them. It took five of them. So, I mean, that just annoys us. Um, but you know what? The one thing I do like about this program, this has been a nine month feud and they're only just about to wrestle one on one. Yes, yes. That baffles me. If it was the E, it would have been. Uh, loads of matches so far, 50 if 50 was, booking. It, if it was WWE, they'd probably face 23,672 times right now. <laughs> yep, that would have happened. That would have happened. Um, so far, the trope of match finishing and then running hasn't happened yet. It didn't happen in the previous match, from what I remember. So, yeah, they've, they've been doing that fucking trope for the last few weeks where it's uh. Match, someone wins, and then either the heel or face gets attacked. Yeah, <clears throat> but that hasn't happened. But they've used this trope of uh, of Sting, which was a bit, for me anyway, it's a bit. Uh, again, stop running away. Five guys stop running away from one bloke mm. or two blokes. What did we get next, James? We got in the second. Ah, uh, 
uh, Hager and MJF backstage. Yeah, backstage. MJF get wants to get the camera guy. In the, uh, it's sort of similar to what he did with Santana and Ortiz. Yeah. Giving him a pep talk. Yeah. It was, it was like, yeah. Yeah, so go, uh, and he goes, you, you should be proud and all that lot. And he goes, yeah, all right. Cheers, bud. And that was it. Then we get then you get a recap of minus one promo on Marco Stunt. Very good promo too. Yeah, it was actually. Takes after his dad, doesn't he? Indeed. Certainly does. Yeah. Uh, who's his promo against? Marco Stunt. Oh yeah, you just said that. <laughs> one of the fam- famous lines is Oh, by the time I'm wrestling, you will be taller than you. <laughs> Which I like that. Yeah, I was popped for that. And then we go backstage <clears throat> to the uh, Drat Express. FTI interrupts, make a short joke to Marco stunt. And Marco's like, oh, Rich, me with Lucha, and we'll have a tag match. So next week you get Marco stunt and, and Jungle Boy versus FTR. They're gonna fuck him up. Fuck oh, I was really looking forward to Lucha Source and Jungle Boy versus FTR. Jungle Boy's got new music as well. Yep. It's Tarzan Boy from the 80s. Yep. You know what? Fair play to Qatar Khan for doing that. Why? Why? Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a good match. I think FTR are obviously just gonna try and beat the air by loving shit. Out of Marco Stunt. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people hate Marco Stunt online. I don't mind him. No. I don't mind him. He's he's funny. He's if he's irritating, he's easy kind of irritating. But I don't mind him. What yeah, what do you what do you yeah, think of him? I don't mind him. It's it's fun character. Yeah, but. he's funny enough. Yeah, there we go to Matt Seidel versus Cody. Who's this Cody's? Was, Who's you know, Cody's? Uh, Cody has got an answer this week. Why doesn't he have an answer? He's got Snoop Dogg. D O double G. D O double G. How was that to remix? Which was bloody awful. Yeah, it wasn't good. So this is bizarre. I think at the same time as appearing um, on AEW, Snoop is in an advert. <laughs> on, yeah, on NXT. <laughs> on NXT. <laughs> fucking hell. He's, he's earning his fucking money today. Do you know how to treat that Snoop jumped to AEW? Yes, he jumped to AEW. WWE Hall of Famer. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Vince McMahon is, is hurriedly rewriting Sasha Banks' entrance music <laughs> as we speak. Yeah, he's doing it. He's, he's, Vince is going to sing it. She's yes, the you. boss. She's Vince the McMahon boss. Vince Sasha Banks for the best, y'all. It's such good boss. Yes. Oh, She's Michael, fired. say it's boss time again. It's boss, it's boss time. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait. The trope of uh, run-ins after a match actually happens after this fucking yeah. match. But it made sense, though. Fair play for yeah, yeah. making it make sense. Yes. Because uh, Cody, um, Cody and Matt Seidel are fighting on the outside and they bump into S- to Serpentico and uh, d- Dr. Luther. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they, get, they go back in, finish the match. Um and Doctor Lufa and Serpentico run in, try and yeah, decimate both of them. Cody wins. Yes. How did he win? What did he he win with the? He did hit a cross, crossroads. Side out was two near the way, so he got him up again. Another crossroads to the win, which made the side out looks good. Cody needed two crossroads to win. Ah yes, I thought he was just being a fucking heel. I, I totally missed that spot because he did his push up spot. Yeah. So, what, 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 he'll, yeah. Right, fine. Okay. So then, uh, as you say, uh, hits him twice with, hits him with two crossroads. 
um, <clears throat> because the first one is too near the ropes. Um, Serpentico and Dr. Leaf are, are in, beating the crap out of both of them. Um, they managed to get rid of Lufa and or Serpent- is Serpentico. Serpentico is laying down. Side out looks kind of ropes, but nope. Snoop Dogg climbs the ropes. Yeah. Snoop's like, nah, let me do it, let me do it. And he fucking climbs. The worst <laughs> splash I have ever seen. <laughs> to be fair, it's not a trained fucking wrestler, but. Jump and spread, spread out. <laughs> I think I could have probably done a better job. Yeah, I've probably. had some training, but not a lot. I don't think I ever graduated to high spots. Such yeah, Banks has okay. responded to Snoop Dogg's splash. What did Sasha say? Okay, one well, sec. Fam, we're going to have to work on this. Shit. Uh, They're cousins, aren't they? They are cousins, yes. And a fam asks, <coughs> what the hell was that move called? Sasha put the Snoopy splash. The Snoopy splash. Absolutely tremendous. Good name, to be fair. I rate that. It does it? It, uh, it it goes well. He looked pleased with himself afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't too broken up about it. He enjoyed himself. He had a Jericho, good time. Jericho's going. I hate him. <laughs> yeah. I they, hate that guy. <laughs> they walks over and starts hugging him. All. It must must have thought they were on advert or something. So Jericho's all hugging, smiling. Then when they realise, go. I still hate him. Yep. Then they go to our breaks and we come back for the weakest punt part of the show. The weakest part? Yeah, well, the AEW the, Women's Championship match. The, the usual part of the show because it's the second to last fucking spot again, isn't it? Yeah. They keep doing this. <laughs> Why? It, it makes sense this time, but it's a title match. They got the two oh, title yeah, matches yeah. at the end of the show. Fair dues. Um. Abaddon versus challenging Hikaru Shida. So why do you think it was the weakest part of the match? Uh, weakest part of the show? Didn't get. I uh, didn't like the biting bit. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They had to go underneath the ring. Yeah. And she come back out with like blood on her neck. Like, okay, yeah. if, if you got bit on the neck as badly as you're making it out to be with all the the fake blood, surely it'd be gushing. Have you seen The Walking Dead before? Yes. So like the series, I think series four finale, Rick bites that chunk out of that guy. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, what, yeah. I, that's what you should expect. Yes. There's no fucking bite marks or anything. No. <laughs> so they should drop that. They should drop the biting. Um, unless they're going to like say, like, yeah, we'll do it for real. Or, or do something else. I personally thought the match was okay. It wasn't as bad as... Most the match was okay. The... I just didn't like the story of it. Mm. And they had to go underneath the ring. Yeah. Um, the full length of the ring. It's like underneath one part of the ring to the other side of the ring. It's like. Oh, man. Yeah, the Babylon hits the backside, but Sheila rolls through, gets a two count, and Sheila with a shining wizard for the free. Yep. yep. It was like, okay, the mini food. For... Shit, I was, I guess. Should the title have changed there, do you think? No. No? No. Do you not think Sheila's at it's a bit too long and somebody else was maybe a bit more personality? They're probably waiting for she- Dr. Bit Breaker, I think. To be a- oh. Fair is. I mean, I think... Yeah, I mean... I think it's time for somebody else. Mm. I, w- I wouldn't have been too messed up if it had changed there. Um, <clears throat> women's the NWA Women's Championship is being contested, uh, and was hyped up with Ty Conte. Yeah, and so Anna J. Backstage, Ty Anna. Just behind them, we got Axe, John Silver, Axe Reynolds. They remind Serena that they will be nope by herself comes with and she fights for NWA Women's Championship. 
But I think it looks like Ty has actually joined the Dark Order now. It looks like she has done, doesn't it? It's very strange. Mm. It's strange that they got to... The, the NWA Women's Championship is still hanging around on, uh, on AEW. Produces the better matches, not going to lie. Yeah, it does. Maybe should have like, combined both belts, maybe. Well, I think the NWA um, needs their own title, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid thing to say. So, Ray Phoenix versus Kenny Omega. Yeah, we have uh, a little backstage room and Pac, Ray, and Penta get a promo. Pac says the death, their death triangle and introduces the next champion, Ray Phoenix. Yeah, there's just so much happened in this match. It was so, the the best move of the fucking match. That that weird back uh, German suplex. Yeah, oh, that was so good. <laughs> How the hell did they do that? It I'd, was just it was indescribable. So much neck stuff. So yeah. much. Like this is the match that the Grand Metal League. Uh, Escobar match should have been yeah oh, flippy 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 yes yeah I mean I'm not really a spot monkey but I, I like uh, I like to see a few spots Jay would have loved this match man. yes I think he probably did <laughs> um, so but there's yeah. no Canadian destroyers so I can't gather <laughs> so, uh, lots of kicks to the face um, a Rikishi driver as well. <laughs> yeah. Fucking a Rikishi driver so good. Um, oh, quickly, before they did mention a lot of New Japan for the match. Yeah, I mentioned Kota Ibushi. Kota Ibushi um, winning big and uh, Megan and Carla got voted the best Wrestle Kingdom match. Yes. So, it's a bit... Uh, Not talking about it now, so we're getting to our prediction of streams on Sunday. Yeah. <clears throat> so previously um on impacts on the, the last impact that's just gone um Kenny and the good brothers beat up um uh most machine guns and Rich Swan yeah uh, outside the tour bus um and Actually, that that wasn't significant of anything. I don't know. That's just going to be something that plays in uh, hard to kill. Um, so, yeah. So I, there's V trigger, V trigger, V trigger, V trigger. Like a normal Kenny match. Yes. Loads there's, of V triggers. Yeah. Kenny puts from wave one wind angel, but no one's really talking about the match. Talk about what happened after the match. Oh yeah. So Cass is on the mic. He says, "Here's the reason why Pack and Pent aren't here." We go backstage and they've been attacked by the family, setting up Kingston King and Pack next week. And Callis promises Ray not one more one with the angel, but Moxie comes out of barbed wire baseball bat, walks him in, hits Megan the stubber and gets cut on his arm. But then who comes out of the crowd? The good brothers <laughs> jump Moxley. And I hit a magic killer. They hand the back to Moxie and keep smacking them. Then Brian Pillman and Griff Garrison. I do say it to TV, who the fuck is Griff Garrison? <laughs> Call back to being the elite. Did you watch any of that? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was Griff Garrison? <laughs> yeah, that's why we recruited Jungle Boy. He said, it's Griff Garrison. Who the fuck is Griff Garrison? Fucking hell. Uh, um... So the, the Good Brothers have got their, their Impact Tag Championships with them as well. Yeah. It's like, ooh, another, time, uh, another, um, another promotions, well, another, another promotions title was on your TV show. Yeah. So that wow. comes after a little bit, Matt and Nick Jackson. Matt, Matt and Nick Jackson come out. Um, they are helping Kenny. Kenny's getting held back by uh, Pillman Brian and who Jr. the fuck is Griff Garrison? <laughs> <laughs> they super kick him. He, yeah, 
and was like, uh, the commentator was like, um, what? Yeah. I think they were, they were helping Kenny because Kenny's their friend. They're in the elite. Yeah. And elite are in action next week. Yeah. So it stands to reason that they, why they would do that because they don't attack Moxley while no. Moxley's on the floor. They don't, they, they just, they just help, um, Kenny. They don't go attacking everyone else like yep. the good brothers do. Um, as but as they're saying, talking though, Kenny stops everyone, then holds up the two sweet. Oh, Obviously, yes. Gaz and Anderson join in. But then the Bucks join in yeah. as we fade to black. Oh, reluctantly. Yeah. They, uh, they, but they, they did the it. Sweet. Yeah. I think they're going to be conflict. They're going to be conflicted initially, but they may very well just turn full heel again. Like the time when they were super kicking everyone all over the place. So, uh, the return of the Bullet Club. But uh, are they going to be called the Bullet Club? Can um, they be called the Bullet Club? Be, I think they'll be called the Bullet Club. You think they're going to be called the Bullet Club? No, I don't think they will. Oh, right. Maybe um, Shell Gang or something like that. What gang? Shell, you know, like shotgun shells. Shell Gang? Gang is another word for like club. Shells is another word for bullet, I guess. Ah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Shell gang for, for 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 life. What about the two sweet? What are they going to call that? Oh shit! Shouldn't they be doing it below as well? They're going to cease and desist is coming. Oh, you know. there's going to be so many ceases and desists, 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 desists. <laughs> so, I smell a blood and guts match. Yes. A small but who would they be too. against? Combination of uh, AEW wrestlers and NWA wrestlers. I think could be obviously five team. Moxley. Obviously. Mm, yes. I want Griff Garrison in it, damn it. But well, obviously not. Um Moxley. Swan and the Guns. Ooh. Yes. I like and it. Who else? That last one be? Either uh, Cesare or Daniels. Maybe. Yeah. I'm going to say Callahan, but... No, I don't think Callahan... What, what but... Callahan with, against Moxley? Not with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say that. So, he... Moxley, either Daniels or Kazarian, depending on which one turns on what. Uh, or probably maybe Cody, actually, think about it. Yeah, Moxley, yeah. Cody, Swan, and the Motor City Machine Guns. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. But, I don't know, it's like... How, I want... People were expecting the Good Bubbles versus the Bucks. Yeah, people weren't. I couldn't understand why. So yeah, because uh, they're still oh. friends. So AJ's probably at home wiping a tear away from his eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could have all been so good if if, yeah. if one man just hadn't hoarded loads of talent. For fuck's sake! Yeah, uh, it's maybe really <sighs> interesting to see what will happen. Yep. Because the elite action next week, whether the good bubs will stay there or not, different story. Whether the bucks turn up an impact on Tuesday, who knows? Who knows? Ruth. Exciting times, though. Exciting. It is times. Indeed, exciting times. Do you have anything to plug as we wrap this up? Huh? I won't plug my Twitter as I did in our disclaimer on the Wrestle Kingdom Night Two. Nice. If you make people work, make me work more. I've got to plug my shit. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Harkan James. Just, you probably wish you didn't see me last night. I'm annoyed at politics, but we might get into that. I think we all did. Oh, that was tremendous. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, the, that kid blocking us on Twitter. I fucking love that. I can't believe. And he was giving you so much shit as well. It gave me so yeah. much satisfaction. Ah, uh, fucking yeah. prick. Guy I happen to have some issues with on Twitter because Keith Lee's apparently buried. He's not. What an idiot. 
He's lost about four, been pinned four times since August. And that was against Styles, Strowman, Keith Lee, and Drew McIntyre, sorry. Yep. Uh, I'm Paddy, a stupid, unintelligent WRE schmuck. I don't even watch the weekly product. I don't even watch NXT's weekly product. I don't even watch AW's weekly product. <laughs> I'm just watching today because I'm in isolation. Anyway, fuck him. He's a dishbag. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah. Uh, follow the pod on Twitter at Halfcam Podcast, uh, on YouTube, Podbean. Uh, Apple, Apple Pods, we sweet Spotify, Spotify as well, Google, Indeed. oh, and Google as well. Follow me on, uh, follow me on, on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Yardy three sixteen. Um, any pods that you got coming up this Sunday? We're doing a normal podcast. It's all top fives, but it's our top five predictions of this year. Uh, so we want to know what everyone's predictions is for this year it could be as outlandish as you want the more more outlandish the better i think so it's all unique don't want oh then a go back that's a go back with one fight outlandish it's an all that happened at wrestlemania yeah that's always gonna happen at wrestlemania We we want different predictions yes Decent predictions. Different like crazy Goldberg, outlandish. Like, yeah, like Goldberg walking out mainly with both titles. <laughs> I think that's fucking good enough. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, spear versus Spear and he fucking went gee whiz. Wow. <sighs> Goldberg walks out mainly with both titles. I'm <laughs> never watching again. I won't say that because I will. <laughs> I I don't know what I'll do if that happens. But uh, yeah, uh, we've got next, that. in the next couple of weeks. Me and Ryan will be back again to review Rumble 2001. Yes, indeed. Which I, I can't wait to watch that show. <laughs> I look forward to that. Yes, uh, there will be at some stage, probably very soon, another wrestling uh, for beginners podcast. As soon as tomorrow, in fact, I think. Uh, but. <laughs> Take a look out for that. Uh, that'll be out very, very soon. And uh, on that bombshell. Who the yeah. fuck is Griff Garrison? Who the fuck is Griff Garrison? It's Griff Garrison! Hey! So that's Griff Garrison. Oh, God. It's We're out of time, boy. folks. We're out of time. <laughs> We're out of time. See you later, folks. Bye.